For almost two years now, the Redmi Note 9 Pro has been my daily driver and I use it as my camera to record videos for this YouTube channel. But for that time period, I have good things and bad or worse experiences with it that gives me a lot of realizations if I can still consider to recommend not just this phone, but for the whole brand itself. Hi, my name is James from Tech MNO, and let's answer the question if the Redmi Note 9 Pro is still worth buying or using this 2022. Before we begin, as always, this phone or video was not sponsored by Xiaomi or any other third-party sellers in the Philippines. I purchased this Redmi Note 9 Pro with 6 gigs of RAM with 128 gigs of storage that I'm currently using now. The phone that I'm recording on this video was the same Redmi Note 9 Pro used before by my brother that only has 64 gigs of storage that I currently own now. So, this will be a 2 for one video experience that we had on this phone. If you want to watch my review video for this phone, I will link in the description box below or in the card above so you can watch it later on. Let's start on the phone's body and design. Up until now, I really adore the Note 9 Pro's design. The camera module is so symmetrical that even the camera bump here is huge by the way. It won't wobble on the flat surfaces and it doesn't have any scratches on the sides of it or even the glass cover. Plus the fact that looking for a good case is easy to find like what I am using right now from Rinke, links below or the card above, protection is not an issue here. Yes, the body is made from plastic but it's quite a matte finish here that won't be scratch prone as my experience. The only thing that I really hate about this design is Xiaomi's decision to put the Gorilla Glass of high panel here as glossy as hell. As much as I want to put it naked and appreciate this gorgeous glacier white and my brother's interstellar gray, it's super prone to fingerprints and smudges that I bought a transparent carbon fiber skin to avoid it cleaning every single time. They address it on their predecessors to this phone, which I like. Moving on to the display, I enjoyed the IPS LCD panel on the Redmi Note 9 Pro up until now, after two years. But I like I mentioned in my previous video about this phone, it's unusable if in direct sunlight. And this is the reason why my phone now has suffered display retention or LCD ghosting that may look like a burn-in if you have an AMOLED panel. Yes, it may disappear after a while, but this issue won't happen if the brightness is good outdoors because in the middle of the lockdowns, I am always the one who needs to go outside and buy essentials. Other than that, I never experienced any display issues with it, which is a plus point to the Note 9 Pro. 6Hz panel is still good for me even though mid-range phones nowadays have at least 9 or even 120Hz display. To be honest with you, high refresh rates is still not a standard for me since only a few apps and games support high refresh rates. So there's that. When it comes to performance, the Snapdragon 720G provides me fast and smooth performance on medium to heavy usage day to day, including playing games that now I'm playing like Apex Legends Mobile, even though I'm high settings and HD graphics mode only. Though there's some minimal lags, frame drops, and low graphics settings like when I played Genshin Impact, which is expected since the chipset on this phone is also two years old now. So if we want to put performance and want high or even medium settings on games that you want, then it's time to upgrade now. While it lacks the 5G connection and Wi-Fi 6E that newer phone chipsets and phones have these days, I don't mind them at the moment since even though 5G is available in the Philippines, the implementation and coverage is not yet right. While Wi-Fi 6E isn't prevalent to some Wi-Fi modems and accessories here, if it's available, it's expensive at the moment. Before we go any further, if you enjoy watching this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon so you get you notified when a brand new video will come out. And follow us on social media accounts like Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and on TikTok at TechMNO for more content and big giveaways that you can have right now that you can check out in the card right here. In terms of the camera department, the 64 megapixel main camera still gives a great photos and videos either on hot summer days or a rainy gloomy afternoon in my two years of using this phone. The night mode photos have changed a bit in my opinion because of the software. I will save the camera algorithm changes in the software segment and we'll talk more about it later. In terms of the 8 megapixel ultra wide, the camera it's somewhat usable just what I said in the review years ago. Did I use it all the time? Not much but I'm still grateful that I have this camera if in case of a photo that subject needs to be seen as a whole. Night shots though are still bad, not gonna lie. The other two sensors like the macro and depth is there but I don't use them every time especially on that macro lens here. It's just wasted the money and effort to put this on this phone. 
That's why I am a big advocate to stop using these Norton sensors just to market this as a quad camera. Ugh. In terms of its battery, well, it still works properly, but the screen on time on the Redmi Note 9 Pro really shows it's aging, or maybe not. Anyways, I can only get 8 hours on screen on time with Wi-Fi turned on if I use this on medium usage. Though for heavy usage, you can see it's downfall. I can only get at least 5.5 to 6 or maybe 7 if I squeeze really well if I use it for heavy usage like shooting videos for Filmic Pro and 1080p 30 frames per second or if I day off, a whole play of keep playing games. The charging though is one of my disappointments in this phone. Before, I could charge my phone from 10 or 20% to 100% in less than 70 minutes. Now, I can charge my phone in 1 hour 30 minutes on average with its included charger and on the cable in the box. Which is still hard to buy like the other counterparts and you need to buy other products like the 65 one GAN charger that I have. But overall, I can still get this phone for almost a day if I use it lightly. And it's a battery and whatever we do in our phones, be it light or heavy usage, batteries will still deplete whether we like it or not and do some battery hacks or not. Battery is still a battery. Maybe you're wondering why the software is the last part of my video even though it should be next in the performance section of this free review. It's because this is one of my major complaints of not just by this phone but for the entire Xiaomi phone review portfolio that I have in this channel. And I need to be frank again to everyone who will watch this video that in my opinion, MIUI is the buggiest and unstable UI in the entire market. Period. For years, I tried to endure this laziness of Xiaomi by giving us the patch we need if there's a problem. Yes, they will fix their previous problems, but not all of it, plus there's a new batch of problems along the way, and give it after 3 or more months. Right now, I'm on MIUI 12.5.5 based on Android 11 with, get this, March 2022 updates. Yes, we are in August now, but the security patches are still in March? Bravo, Xiaomi. Bravo. If you watch my video on the Poco M3 slash Redmi 90 issue that swarmed not just here in the Philippines, but for the entire global and Indian ROM units last September to October last year, I said that Xiaomi, the main company, hasn't addressed any of these kinds of issues or been acknowledged that they're fixing it. I will put all of the issues and problems I encountered that I remembered here in my two years of use. The most memorable problem I experienced is the earpiece and the speaker is not working or dead silent when there's a call on the other side for Epi Messenger or even the regular call. It happens all the time and I always need to restart my phone just to solve that issue, which wastes my time and the other person on the other line. I know there are some people now who are typing their asses so hard in the keyboard saying, they don't lock the boot loader to change the ROM now, simple as that. And so many things about changing my software of my phone to avoid it. Well, I will say this, why should I sacrifice my phone for those simple things I'm writing here. If I do it on my phone, I cannot use my backing apps nor having issues on the security patches given by Android that Xiaomi cannot give it also on time. In a world where software exploits, phishing, and hacking are a massive problem that makes it like a standard day in our lives and smartphone innovation are less and less as the years gone by too, people are now relying on the longevity of their phones to at least 4-5 to five years which Apple are doing with their devices. While Google and Samsung follow suit with this trend, Xiaomi on the other hand doesn't care about it at all and just creates new phones like there's no tomorrow just to hide their other phones issues. With all of the things I experienced on the Redmi Note 9 Pro through my 2 years of using it, it leads now to the question, is still worth buying on this phone this 2022? Well to be honest with you, it's a great phone, not gonna lie. But the MIUI software ruins everything that this phone that I love. But to answer the question, I will break it down into two parts. For those who will buy it now, either brand new or secondhand, and for those who are using this now and asking if it's time to let this phone go and move on with a great phone. For those who will buy this in secondhand or brand new, if possible, the answer is no, but with an exception. If you prefer a great performance on your daily usage without the problem of MIUI, then you look somewhere else and get a phone that provides software support for a long time if that's kind of your thing. For those who own this phone and thinking if it's a time to get a new device and let go of this one, 
then it depends on how you want in the smartphone these days. It's an automatic go if you need a newer 5G connection or you want a smooth 90Hz panel or you want an AMOLED panel screen. However, if you're just a casual user and don't need the things I mentioned a while ago, then you can hold on for one more year or once the phone will be go broken and not work anymore. At the end of the day, the Redmi Note 9 Pro is a great device in its launch year. It really defines the mid-range market to be a very capable phone to get this powerful chipset and its Apple RAM and storage. Though it's sad to see that MIUI ruined everything in my experience and I will think that I will try to avoid recommending these kinds of phones as the first pick. I really wish that Xiaomi wakes up now and fixes these problems before it's too late. And for more videos like this, check out my playlist right here. Or if you want to watch my review video of the Redmi Note 9 Pro, click it right here. Again, my name is James and I'll catch you guys on the next one.